my name is Bill Banks Jones. I'm a theatre director. Um, I run a company called Tessa Tet, which is there to produce opera, mainly new, sometimes old, in funky ways, and host a festival of new opera, helps other people develop their work, and um, I sometimes translate pieces. On Tuesday I'm going to perform, which doesn't often happen, it's a bit scary, um, and direct that shows all over the place in all kinds of media, really. Tessa Tet is, is based in King's Cross, but is a little confused because I live in West Cornwall and our music director lives in Newcastle, so we're actually beginning to try and do the splits and make stuff happen in all three places. That's a very good question. Tessa Tet is for the future of opera, I would say, and um, to a degree now, it's primarily for the artists. And I think the audiences that we have are incredibly important. And they tend to be people who have some dedicated specialist interest in seeing the next great thing. Well, new writing has always been a big strand of my work, particularly because I come into opera as a theatre director. Um, and also, have really long wanted to help makers of opera be literate in theatre. They tend to come from the musical world and the theatre side of their training is always neglected. The question I'd say would be, um, what are the challenges facing new opera versus the historic canon? Yes. And I think the answer to that is the biggest problem is the opera industry and particularly the opera companies, the big opera companies themselves. I think that they're walling themselves up in a kind of um, um, mausoleum of old material and that by doing so they then get in a panic about um, how that can and can be refreshed. I'm talking about Europe here, actually, because I think there's a huge difference between Europe and America. In America, it's very interesting how new work is, is becoming more and more lively, whereas in Europe, it's becoming more and more moribund. And it's, this is happening in quite an interesting, strange way. That um, Whereas in Europe, we're stuck in Vienna in about 1910, and people are still trying to be iconoclastic. And after 110 years of iconoclasm, there's no more images to destroy. So it's becoming like white noise. Whereas in America, the nation as a whole, steered by Opera America, have taken um, a policy decision that new opera matters because they want opera to be American as well as European. They can't just carry on regurgitating Tosca or whatever. And so that, over the last 40 years, has led to a really rich output which we're putting on the air all the time. So it's really striking that of the most of the new operas at English National Opera in the last 15 years have been American. There was 10 years where they were all American. I think it makes, well, there's a certain level of technical skill that a particular style of writing demands, but otherwise, no, it's, it's all one thing. That's a really interesting question. Where do I see Tete Tete going? I see Tete Tete moving to some degree to where we live. So my musical director's in Newcastle and I'm in Cornwall. And we suddenly went, this is a bit weird that we're doing all the work in London. So we have just recently actually made a really transformative two-day project culminating in a, a, amazingly a big community opera with 150 performers, which we flunked together in a couple of days. And that was just like lobbing a boulder into the Newcastle pond to see if we'd be able to build up something bigger. And, and it had a really great response. Oh yeah, sure, I think yeah, you could do contemporary opera anywhere. 
Um, though he's slightly shy of the, the word contemporary opera because even that is industry. Um, you know, it's a kind of code, it's part of the catechism that cuts out a lot of people. I think new opera is a bit easier. The thing I've learned most from in the last couple of years is these things called Qubit Sessions we've done with Tessa Tech, where King's Cross property developers gave us a decent amount of money to perform new opera outdoors in basically a bandstand in the middle of a street. And the audience was transformed. You could just, if you look at the photographs of them, you look at them and go, well, this is completely unlike anybody. It's, it's like the people in the tube train, something like that, which is quite other to the people you'd see in any opera house. And that's been absolutely thrilling. And I think the reason that it's attracted every, all these people is nobody's told them that a new opera is a problem. They haven't had to buy a ticket, they haven't had to learn the whole catechism, they haven't had to walk under a chandelier, they haven't had to understand what the Donald Gordon Grand Tier is. They just turn up, um, grab a drink or bring a picnic, sit in this square in King's Cross and enjoy stuff for what it is. Nobody's lowered the ticket price to make them feel as if it's a bit worthy because actually there isn't a ticket price because they don't charge anything. I really wish that more people could afford to do this. Because you just find out that the problem of new opera is a problem of the industry, not of the public. They're very happy to devour this, whoever they are.